Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sage, and uh, we did market patterns, which is not a very sexy name for what we're doing. Uh, but first of all, thank you for having uh, us here. It's been a pleasure to meet some of the most wonderful people and talk about some of the most ingenious ideas over this weekend. Um, I also haven't slept a lot, so if this goes downhill, it's probably because of that. <laughs> all right. There you go. Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to drag this over because I think otherwise the resolution is going to be too low if I can maneuver. There you go. Right side. There you go. All right. So um, we started, well, I started working with Daniel, who's not here. He had to leave early to drop off his son to camp. But that's not important. Uh, <laughs> what is important is what we did here. Um, Daniel proposed this idea when I talked to him about uh, trading, but in a very specific way. Uh, we look at stock markets, and it's always ambitious to kind of predict where stock market's going to be, but it's a really hard task to do in the real world. Not just because of volatility in the market, but because there's a lot of underlying factors, such as machine learning, that is already taking place, and a lot of algorithms that control high volume trading, and makes it really difficult to do that. But if you have a specific strategy in mind for trading, then it's kind of easier to predict or kind of realize what the patterns are and hopefully select the data that you want to train something like Newpick on so that you can kind of get what you want at the end of the day. So let me explain that a little bit further. So what we did was we took stock data from the S&P 500 we looked at 15 years in the past, and we just picked one stock. In the case of this, we picked Google because we're already here. Um, so we picked Google's stock, and we looked 15 years back, and we started selecting for data that we wanted to kind of see. So we knew we were not trading for large gains. We were trading for small gains, maybe $1 to $5 gains, but at least a three-day window of trading and a maximum of 14 days of trading window. Pardon me? I just saw some stuff. Okay. Uh, the second thing we did was we kind of started looking at where these events happened. So we looked at where these events happened specifically, and once we had those points, we knew where the D's, where the t, where t zero was. If you think of like physics way of thinking about it, t zeros happen at certain points in the past 15 years. So then we said. If T0 happened here, what happened preceding that event? Was there a pattern that happened preceding that event that kind of helps us detect whether this pattern is going to happen again? We, don't, we couldn't predict if it's going to go up or down specifically yet, but we think that the patterns had something to say about what happened next. So what we did was we took the data, we put it through this selective process, uh, kind of like a Darwinian thing, and we just selected for data that we wanted. We looked back from those data points about, I would say about 28 days, and we tried to get all the past points. Then we took that data and not describe just the prices, because that's, that, that kind of misses the point of predictive analysis. It's more about describing what was happening. So we looked at the patterns in the market, and we looked at the candlestick patterns, and we tried to describe them semantically in a way that Newpick understands uh, similarities and concurrencies and differences. So we had overlaps between the highs and the lows, and we looked at the upper shadows and the lower shadows. Uh, we looked at whether the data, whether the two candlesticks were engulfing one another, whether the midpoint was higher and lower. A lot of different ways of kind of coding. We, we basically built our own encoder for that candlestick pattern. We also looked at the Stoke RSI to kind of analyze whether we were trading at a really low point and whether we should be, it should be over, it was overtraded or was undertraded. So that's. A daily bars. Yeah, so it was, we had the high, we had the low, and we had the open and close prices for daily records for the past 15 years, and we kind of used all that to describe the data more than just put the prices in there. So with that being said, what we got out were, for Google stocks, we got about, oh, I know, it's right here. No, of course not. It's going to be on this side. There you go. So... We were able to build, sorry, I was speaking the mic. We were able to build this thing called a trainer that uses our encoding method to encode the data we have 
to train um, new pick using the, the temporal pooler only. We took the spatial part out of it. We thought we were doing a pretty good job at encoding, no offense. Um, <laughs> and we used the temporal part because we think that's where the patterns really emerge. So what we did was uh, we broke the data that we had into about 70% uh, Try, uh, like training data and 30% uh, test data. And we never showed the test data to, the, to new pick. We only showed it the train data. So this is uh, one of the ways it does it. We uh, just go ahead and load the training data. And right here, I'm loading the file. It's super low, so I'm just going to put it up higher. Uh, right here, so it's loading up a, a table of Google CSV file into the thing, looking for the exact markets up and downs, finding the exact points we want for trading that whatever amount it is we're looking for, and it's going to find those perfect points and then go back from those points and feed those into new pick. But it's never going to show you the test data, which we're going to also make at the same time. So I go ahead and run that. It runs through a whole process. We get about 250 data points, and then from that we go backwards in time. We get about 2,000 days worth of records in new pick to train it. Then we went ahead and tested it using the data we had never shown it before. Oops. We had never shown NewPick before. And we wanted to see how good it was at recognizing the same patterns again. And we wanted to look at the anomalies from that. I'm hoping, I'm, hope, I'm, hope I'm making Daniel proud because he did a lot of work on this. Um, so anyway, it goes through the training process. Got about 130. I'm just going to stop it because it's been trained like three or four times already. Um, so we went ahead and uh, we analyzed. So this is a test file that we produced, and this is never shown to NewPic, and we, we turned uh, the learning process off at this point. I wanted to see whether it could recognize the same patterns happening again and whether the anomalies were low enough. So then we went ahead and did that. This produces a graph, and it shows you on like a graph way how close it is to predicting an anomalies. And if it's closer to zero, then that means that's recognizing the patterns that we wanted to recognize. And hopefully, it'll pop up in about 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. No. OK. Wait, there you go. So you can see, I mean, it starts off OK, but then you can see it starts to recognize more and more of the patterns. And it's realizing the patterns we want. We selected the patterns before. It's happening in the test files, too, obviously. So you're starting to see that the patterns have been tr it has been trained on, and it kind of recognizes that it becomes more closer to being to zero and being like, yes, this is the pattern that I want, that I, have, that I know of. So then I was like, let's take it one step further, and let's get some real-time data. So I went on. <laughs> I went on Ystock Finance and downloaded a plugin for Python, and I said, why not go ahead and um, start streaming data maybe about half a year back and start looking 30 days ahead and start seeing if there's anomalies that are low enough for us to kind of see if the pattern is happening now. And so this is going to basically be streaming from Ystock Finance, so hopefully it works. Um, I didn't get a chance to like make it all gooey and fancy, but um, so it's streaming, and you can see it's got an anomaly value of 0.18 in that time period, 0.17, and it started load, loads, loads the, loading them up. And if you get a time period where the anomalies are significantly close, you know that pattern that we recognized before is happening. And the thing is, we can make this a little, obviously, a lot better. Uh, in the sense that we can not only train it to recognize when the patterns that we want are happening, we can look at the opposite side and teach it the patterns we don't want also happening, and then kind of compare the two and correlate when the best probability of is investing in those stocks are. Really, it's for, I think, I think the application for this stems beyond just finance. I think human behavior plays a great role, but I think this is a good demo for something like this and for temporal learning and patterns. And that's basically it. Thank you for your time. Sorry, Any questions? questions? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. It's all been pushed to GitHub. It's all free to use. Feel free. Um, yeah, so I mean, I wanted to do more, but the more I do, the more I break last minute, so I didn't. <laughs> What's that? Uh, well, I talk. Yeah. So, so within this anomaly, it's taking a, a pretty significantly big window, and it's, it's taking an average of all the anomalies within that window. So the idea would be to go within this anomaly, look at the array, and see where the lowest anomaly happened. Because then you can start seeing the same patterns again that happened before. And if you recognize these candlesticks are happening again before a significant event, whether it be up or down, that I don't know of yet. But I think that's where the idea 
fundamentally lies. If you can figure out uh, at what point you want to kind of investigate, and uh, and the idea is to compare something like this against things they already have, because really this involves temporal learning and and building connections to synapses versus something that's an algorithm. I feel like it's too fixed, and I think something like this has a, has a lot more potential to do a lot more in the long run than something that's already fixed in its parameters. Is that is that answer your question? Kind of, not really. I know I'm terrible at that sometimes. We can talk later. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. It was daily. It's daily again. Uh, I just went ahead and looked. The, I just asked Yahoo Stock Finance to give me data 200 days in the past, uh, starting at 200 days in the past, and then going 30 days forward from there. And every time, I just went one day forward and then 30 days from that, and looked at the anomalies between those two sections. Yeah. And uh, the second question is, um, were the anomaly scores uh, the next period, uh, the next day? The anomaly scores, so they have to be taken with a grain of salt. They tell you when new pick is seeing something that it has seen before. Because the way we picked our patterns, it tells us that the new pick recognizes the patterns that are happening again since it was trained on those very same patterns. And if we can, if, if, if patterns do hold true, if, his, if history does repeat itself, as they say, then I think to a certain extent there is some predictability in these kind of data. I know there's a lot of things that happen in the world that change markets, but I think markets are a meta-analysis of looking at those kind of events. Yes, obviously anomalies exist, and that's what we're doing here, but I think at the end of the day, and this is basically just written out of data because it's caught up today. Uh, that's not my failure, that's just, I can't, I'm sorry, there's no future data. But, uh, but yeah, so I think there's some, there's some predictability to something like this. Any other questions? I don't want to take too much time, so I feel like, okay. okay. Um, anybody else? Oh, thank you. Um, well, I like to, I'd like to thank my team. I mean, they put in a lot of effort. And Daniel, who's not here, he's he's amazing, and he really sold me on the idea. And I think we started working, and then after that, just we couldn't stop. Uh, well, I couldn't. <laughs> um, any other questions? Oh, okay. Thanks. Thank you for your time thank again. You. It's been a pleasure.